use a miss mic and just advance there. All right. Almost to lunch, just a few more to go. So talking about Harvard Forest, first off some site news. So we held a cross-site synthesis workshop with Hubbard Brook, learning about some interesting differences between our neighbors, just about two hours away, but we're learning all sorts of things about uh, how we do things differently and where we can come together and gain some better understanding of our uh, temperate sites. Um, we've got some sad news that the Barry Wood warming experiments after 20 years, this is our largest soil warming experiment, has died and we are beginning uh, with an opportunity to destructively sample. So this experiment contains entire trees and their root systems, so it's a really unique opportunity, but sad to say goodbye. Um, at the same time, we are launching a new forest edge by precipitation experiment. So that is being installed uh, this summer. Uh, we have also started working on our seventh uh, round of LTR proposal writing. Uh, so that is a work in progress. We have gotten funding for a major upgrade and expansion of our field wireless network. Uh, we're also seeing some staff transitions with Greta Van Spoy transitioning into the site manager role, taking over for Audrey Barker Plotkin. And uh, we have a new collaboration with Google. Uh, one of the other hats I wear is a research scientist there part time. And we are looking at Earth observation powered feature spaces. What do I mean by that? Well, we've heard a bit about NDVI, lots of the challenges in working with remote sensing data. We are trying to find ways to condense a lot of that information and make it easier to generate maps, uh, this idea of hyper local representativeness this mapping. So if we have a site, where else does that uh, relate to other places on the landscape and hoping to find some new collaborations with other LTR sites as part of that. In terms of examples, I think everyone has sort of touched on very similar, uh, similar strategies here. So at Harvard Forest, we've got our field-based measurements, whether they're LTR experiments or uh, measurements coming from other networks, NEON, Forest Geo, uh, lots of other experiments cited at the forest. We use the geospatial context, so it's not just the experiments in isolation, but we've got GIS data sets showing us where those plots are. We've got aerial imagery, satellite imagery, and then that all comes together into spatial scaling, whether uh, we're doing mapping uh, or going all the way through to using maps to generate spatially explicit models. And so that is the success story that we wanted to focus on today, which is our regional forest modeling effort. This began in LTR5 and was one of the major themes. Uh, here we're using flux measurements from our towers, uh, as well as towers at uh, Howland and Bartlett in combination with field plot data, so vegetation plots associated with those towers. Those are used to calibrate our forest models. Those models are then used to predict future scenarios, so how things would play out on the landscape at scale uh, across all of New England. And then that feeds back into validating the outputs of those models using uh, those field data sets, so an iterative process there. Getting into some of the questions about uh, challenges. Uh, so regional study area in New England spans huge ecological gradients. So just does not, uh, one little site in the middle does not capture all of uh, this gradient. You can see here is a map of forest uh, species types. Um, and we sit kind of right at that intersection of the Northern hardwoods and the Southern Oak Hickory forest. So we get a lot of mixing, um, but we're not necessarily representative of what's to the North and to the South. Um, additional resources. So when we started doing this, we brought in uh, new models. So working with the Landis 2 and Peanut Sien models, uh, as well as new data sets. So collaborations with the US Forest Service and forest inventory analysis plots and uh, those Bartlett and Howland flux towers to complement the tower sites at Harvard Forest. As part of that, our new connections were formalizing collaborations with the other flux tower sites. And it was our first uh, MOU or uh, memorandum of understanding with the Forest Service to work with the true FIA plot coordinates. And one of the big factors of success building off of that was these new cross-org and cross-site partnerships. And uh, really that we had regional scaling as the organizational theme for that entire LTR cycle, which fed into future cycles. Um, so again, I already said we're kind of in this transition zone, so a shift in thinking uh, as we got through this was that we wanted a more fluid view of our site and we're now going more to where questions can be answered, can't do everything right at our site. So for example, looking at Helmlock and Helmlock Willie Adelgid in Connecticut um, and Emerald Ash Borer throughout the state. And I presented a workshop with Jonathan and Dave Bell uh, at the All Scientists meeting. There's a short link there if you'd like to review the slides, but developed an app using uh, Google's Earth Engine platform 
platform where we have access to an immense amount like petabyte scale satellite image archives. And this is a user interface. Uh, the link is there. This is available to everyone. You don't need an account. You can just go on the web uh, and it allows you to click a point and view time series from any of the sensors listed. So from the earliest Landsats, Sentinel-2, MODIS, uh, Sentinel-1 radar data, and great for exploring some of these scaling relationships. You can look at different spectral bands. You can upload your own uh, plot assets. Uh, if you have an Earth Engine account and look at them, here's our hemlock removal experiment. And one thing that we actually added uh, as a result of that workshop was now when you click a pixel, you can see not only this time series chart with all of the observations, but you can actually export a CSV with the dates, a bunch of uh, all of the spectral data that comes with that, lat long information. So hopefully this will be a great tool for people who are just getting into exploring or interested in new sensors. Um, and at the end of the day, hopefully we'll get away from individual sensors and towards some more supercharged feature spaces. Uh, but yeah, happy to answer any questions about that afterwards or throughout the rest of the meeting. Thank you.